Hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Witcher. In our last video, we caught up with Berengar and met his very grumpy self. We also made our way over to the village here. I believe it's Murky Waters Village. And in case you didn't catch my earlier video today, which you totally should, it's the Dragon Age Inquisition series, the third in the Dragon Age game series, not to shamelessly plug, but there it is. But the whole point of is I mentioned that uh, if I've done everything correctly, today is April 25th, which is my birthday. And I thought uh, a great way to spend it is to no doubt talk to a bunch more people, make it nice and easy on myself. Not that I'm filming this on my birthday because I'm not. I'll be spending the day with my loved one and drinking far too much wine and eating a lot of cake and other things that I can hopefully find at the store. <laughs> But anyway, uh, today's video, that's why you're here. So I want to come down to the inn, but there's other things. I've got the passage to the fields, ruins, collapse bridge, and then the Naya thing is still over here. But let's flag the inn because that's where some people I needed to speak to were going to be at, like Dandelion. I'd like to catch up with him. I feel like he's causing me problems already. And... Um, yeah, that's that's all I got right now. Are all these like little flowers and ribbons things out here for the wedding? That's sweet. Oh, this must be where the wedding is gonna take place. Oh, and I'm guessing Rionio, I think that was a herb or flower to pick that was mentioned by one of the little old ladies in my, in my last video, so. Okay, there's this. Look, there's Selena, there's Julian, there's a wedding guest. When is this wedding actually happening? The tavern. The tavern region. Oh, look, there's ducks. Oh, such a cute little village. It's very quaint and adorable. And All right, I don't need to pick any more flowers. Let me save, because I've been wandering around for a bit before I got here. And what is that? It looks like a... Okay, never mind. Um, door to the healer's hut. Let's not go in there just yet. Well, that's Selena, the sister, and that was Julian, the fiance, no, right? Well, peasant woman. Sorry, I just want to kind of grab some more things. Let's talk to this old lady. Your friend Julian appears a decent youth. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't met the guy. Definitely picking up the Burbercade. Is it? I don't know what I just picked up. Oh. Shame. <laughs> Cutscenes keep interrupting my train of thought. Good morning, Witcher. Greetings. You look sad. My sister will wed a man she doesn't like. I have not to wear to the wedding. For our father expended his savings on his beloved daughter's dowry. Furthermore, it's hot as hell. But all goes well otherwise. Okay. Doesn't sound good. May I ask a question? Yes. Oh, I, I, mean, I know to have tons. Is your sister happy about getting married? I'd like to talk to you. Well, that's what we're doing, Geralt. I... Okay, let's ask about the sister. Is your sister happy about getting married? She's happy. She has no concern for her younger sister. Elena doesn't deserve happiness. Oh, how I hate that nymphette. Now she's ensnared Julian, a wealthy town merchant, while she wanders about with her nose in the clouds. Don't worry. You'll find a good husband. Uh. Better than Julian? Not, woe, I suffer for the masses, Adam. <laughs> how pathetic. Or perhaps you mean the hermit? Such are my options. Did you see the engagement ring Julian gave Elena? A diamond larger than a pigeon's egg. Calm yourself. Why take her side? Admit it, she's dazzled you. Oh, how I despise her. She'll not have you. I'll give myself to you right now on the nearest rock. Um, you merely need to give me a nicer ring than the one Julian gave Alina. Oh, darn. I I don't have a ring. I sold them all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't want, I don't want anywhere near this hot bed. Farewell. But I had other questions to ask. But I have updates first, apparently. Selena seems like Tobias Hoffman's elder daughter is jealous of her little sister, Alina, who's getting married. Well, I can imagine that would stink. 
Alvin. Alina made a good impression, but the truth is I know more about monsters than I do about humans. I'm sure Dandelion has been gossiping away with the locals and can tell me more. Okay. I don't know why that updated off this, but all right. And then another chapter of our pastoral tale unfolds. Jealous of her sister, Selena is actively pursuing Alina's fiance, but Julian seems indifferent to Selena, so I doubt the bride-to-be has much to worry about. Let's talk to her again. Yes? I'd like to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you. I'm in no mood. Oh. Well, I have to sleep with her to get her to talk to me? I feel like you're using me. <laughs> All right, there is the notice board. So let's pick up our, do I have room? I've got room. <laughs> so there's in a million. There's not. So we have the devourer contract, the giant centipede contract, the wyvern egg contract, the basilisk contract, and the alp contract. Okay, let's read through these. Got a hold of a devourer teeth? Don't cast them away. Bring 10 sets to the witch's hut for a reward paid out in pure gold. And then the giant centipede contract. Only buyer of chitinous giant centipede care paces. Come to the elven camp by the lake. Be not afraid. Four care paces earn a decent sum. No doubt about it, elven craftsmen. Okay. The wyvern eggs. They say wyvern eggs are new, are delicious and nutritious. I want to taste them. We'll pay for three eggs in Keeper. Okay. Basculus contract. We'll buy basculus hides, well-preserved ones only. Good money offered for three hides. Collect your payment at the end, Julian. Oh, okay. And then the Alp contract. Let it be known far and wide that the chief of Murky Waters promises to reward anyone who delivers five sets of fangs of the dangerous beast known as Alps, Tobias Hoffman. Oh, and he's the one who also mentioned the monster, you know, the kill the big named monster quests. So I have the Alp contract. I need five Alp fangs. I need three basculus hides, 10 devourous teeth, and um, then I have the giant centipedes and then royal wyverns. But apparently one of them I've already finished. Oh, the alp contract. I have five alp fangs. How convenient. <laughs> okay, well, let's quick save. And go into the inn because why not? Dandelion's here. Catch up with our our old friends, right? Carol, is that you? How are things? I found Alvin. Alvin, wait a minute. Triss wanted me to do something. Hammered it into my head for an hour. Oh yeah, I have a dimeridium amulet for him. Dandelion, I can't trust you to do anything. <laughs> Is that so? Well, I just remembered I had a package for you. A package? I don't know. Something. But I might have lost it. Quit uh. pouting, Dandelion. What do you have for me? Fine. I have a letter to you from your lover. Triss, hand it over. Wonderful. Dimitri Malum Amulet and a letter from Triss. Okay, well, let's look at our quest first. Dan Lillian suddenly remembered that Triss gave him a letter for me and a Dimitrium amulet for Alvin. I should give the pendant to the boy as soon as possible. Last time I saw him, he was at Lena's house. He should be around. And then I had locations. The Country Inn. Tired travelers are drawn to the inn by the smell of fried bacon, boiled cabbage, and sometimes even the famous wyvern egg omelets. A soothsayer inhabits a small hut huddled to the side of the tavern. No well, let's look at this letter from our, our lady. Letter from Triss. <laughs> Scented with perfume. Written in her pleasant flowing hand. Oh, uh, oh dear. Dearest, oh no, I wanted to read it. 
<laughs> Dearest Geralt, you managed to escape in time and you should not return to the city for a while. Yet I hope we will not remain apart for long. Our problems, however, do not end there. Alvin used magic to disappear, but I was able to locate him and sent you there. Take care of him, please. I know you don't need convincing. You've come to like him as much as I have. The boy has been through a lot and his wild magical talents have awakened. When he was with me, he did not have patience enough to undergo basic magic training, claiming he would rather be an explorer of lost ruins, a discoverer of magical artifacts. It's kind of random for a child. But okay. I have enclosed a Demetrium amulet that blocks magic. I hope Dandelion hasn't lost it. <laughs> Please convince Alvin to wear the pendant at all times. Take care of him and think of me sometimes. I deeply hope all will be well with us. Our little affair can't possibly be more difficult than your mission, can it? Be careful and know that I await your return. Your Triss. Oh, how sweet. I feel like I'm being bossed around. Okay, Dandelion delivered a letter from Triss. The sorceress has asked me to take good care of Alvin. She's also worried about me. She hopes we can have a steady relationship and raise Alvin together when I complete my mission. This is this is not Geralt. Why do these ladies keep thinking this is Geralt? I mean, really. All right, let's check out this barrel. And a gambler. Oh, there's Julian. And there's. Let's talk to Dandelion again. Gerald? Okay, uh, lots of questions. Let's just start at the top and work our way down. What happened in Vizima after I disappeared? Who knows? I left soon after you. Though I did hear that you staged quite a bloodbath. Sometimes killing is necessary. Now don't get offended, but has killing people become a pleasure for you? Hmm. I only kill humans in self-defense. Salamanders and their kind deserve to die. I have nothing against slain humans. Um, hmm. I think it's a mixture of the first two. I think Geralt, at least my version of Geralt, would only kill humans in self-defense. But then again, if he sees a human monster, he's going to kill the human monster because he's a monster hunter. So let's go with the second one. Salamanders and their kind deserve to die. I won't judge you. I just hope you know what you're doing. I do. Geralt? Okay. How do you like the country? It's wonderful. Wine, women, song and dice through the night. Dice? I've played. Didn't think the game was popular in the provinces. People here go wild for it. It's incredible. I'm practically a professional. I'm practically a professional. Gerald, not to disappoint you, but you need to practice before you're anywhere near my level. Try me. Come on, you're like a brother. I wouldn't have the heart to skin you. Come see me when you've gotten some practice. Start with Tobias Hoffman or Julian. Oh, I can't gamble him. Mm. Sharpers to play poker with. Well, I keep losing to people, so <laughs> I played some of the best players and did it rather well. Even Zoltan had to admit it. Only sharpers for me from now on. Okay. And the other one was identity. I spoke with Dandelion about killing humans. I admitted I only kill humans when I think they deserve to die. I realize I have no objections to killing humans if I believe they deserve to die. Okay. Let's save and try talking to him again because we had more questions. Gary. Hmm. I wanted to answer that letter. Good idea. I have pen and parchment. Think of a beginning. Um, kindest friend? <laughs> That's not really what she wants to hear, so... Hmm. All right. Dearest Triss. Your romance is blooming. I'm happy for you, Geralt. I don't want to talk about it. Now what? Something about Alvin? I'm sure she's worried about him. <laughs> and I can ask her to notify Foltis immediately of Ada's doings. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Maybe I can describe what's happening here in Murky Waters. Um, let's go with the first one. And I can ask her to notify Foltest immediately of Ada's doings. She could find that interesting. Sit down and write it. The fisherman could take it to Vizima. Oh. Received letter to Tris. 
these? Oh, these quests make me laugh so hard. Two Triss. Beloved Triss, your insight made finding Alvin possible. Also, I received the amulet from Dandelion. Don't worry, the boy will be all right. I will take care of him. I hope that you were able to somehow overcome the difficult situation I put you in. I am very sorry. Oh, Geralt. I think you should talk to Foltis and tell him of his sweet daughter's deeds. I think about you as well, Triss, and I keep thinking about the moments when we were together. I don't know if our relationship will overcome all obstacles, but I don't think we should worry about that just now. What is important is that we have each other. I hope that I will see you soon. Oh my goodness. This is so, this is so awkward. <laughs> I answered Triss's letter and explained my feelings. Well, I have to find someone to give him my, give my letter to them, right? It's only 9.30. Let's talk to him again. Garrett. Okay, I'd ask if I was sending the letter off. How do I get the letter off? Best see the fisherman. He'll take it to Vizima. Okay, so what will the new ballad be about? So, what will the new ballad be about? It'll be a masterpiece, in verse. Interesting, horrifying, romantic. And the story? Engaging and straight from life. I changed my mind, see? Poets don't need to embellish. Life is colorful enough. Aim to write about peasants working the fields? Dandelion, I know you better than that. Not as well as you think. You'll see. Okay, let's ask about the country again. How do you like the country? It's one dice. People here. I doubt I'll try me. I'll believe when I'm done. Oh, I can't play him. All right, let's try to play him. Of a wedding. Well, great news. It only took a few tries and I beat Dandelion. Uh, Dandelion, undoubtedly a better poet than a poker player, but the truth be told, he's an outstanding poet and not bad at dice poker either. I won nonetheless, and I'm beginning to wonder if I'll find anyone better. So I beat him and I have to find another, another person I can uh. challenge. Oh, and I'm surrounded by people. <laughs> okay, well, let me save. And then, let me try talking to him one more time. Gerald? Oh, no, that's it. Okay. See ya. There's a man dancing in front of us. Well, let's see. We have our fist fighters. Are there any innkeepers I could talk to? Is it Beryl? Yes. There's two innkeepers I could talk to. Well, let's talk to the lady innkeeper first. Oops. Well, greetings. If you're weary, rest. If you wish food or drink, call my daughter. I will. Make yourself at home. Thanks. May I help you? I have questions, as always. I have questions. Ask, traveler. What's special about this settlement? Murky waters. We live in seclusion. Tobias Hoffman leads us. Know, too, that our ancestors once inhabited the underwater city. Hmm. Huh. Uh, well, tell me of Tobias first. Tell me about Tobias. He lives in the village but prepares for a wedding, so likely has no time. I'll talk to him anyway. If he's occupied, try speaking with his future son-in-law, Julian. Thanks for the advice. May I help you? Yes, I have more questions. I have questions. Ask... What's special... Murky water. And then let's ask about the underwater city. The underwater city? Lake waters engulfed the underwater city. Some say the gods were angered by debauchery. Now the Vodianoi inhabit the city. Mm, do I sense pride? Do we? Let's go with that one. Did I sense pride? We glory in our ancient heritage, just as we take pride in our prize-winning cow. <laughs> as for our ancestors' bad habits, much has changed since then. <laughs> prize-winning cow. Let's go with that one. Prize-winning cow. She's in the corral between the houses. Our pride and joy. She's made Murky Waters famous. Thanks for the story. May I help you? Uh, yeah, I have more questions. I have questions. <laughs> Ask. Tra What's special? Merc okay, I know what city. And then Voidian... Voidian... I can never say it. Vodianoi? An ancient underwater race. We used to respect each other, but relations have worsened. Tell me about them. They appeared long ago, before the city was engulfed. They live in underwater palaces. They produce tools and baubles, including the famous Stones of Is, supposedly magical. Their warriors, though fierce in battle, seldom attack on land. They chiefly drive away treasure hunters. 
an underwater race of rational beings. <laughs> Interesting. Is that everything then, I take it? May I help you? Okay, yep. Farewell. I don't need to ask about rooms because I don't need to sleep right now. Let's save again. And talk to this innkeeper. <laughs> Greetings, sir. Spacious tavern. What? You think everything's small in the country? I meant no offense. How can I help? Saw your notice. Where's the village mayor? Anything interesting? One thing. Um, what was his notice? Was the eggs, right? I saw your notice. Ah, I need wyvern eggs for my famous omelets. I'll bring you back as many as I can. There's a big demand for my omelets. All right. I don't have any. How can I? Okay, let's go through the rest of these questions. Where's the village mayor? There's a large hut in the village where the mayor spends his time, but he lives in another large hut, so... <laughs> I'll find it. How can I help? Okay, next question. Any interesting news? A wedding, that's what. The mayor's daughter, Elena, is marrying a townsman called Julian. He's staying here at my inn. Okay. One thing. Yes? Oh, rent a room. You must know some interesting stories. You look sad. How can I help? Oh, let's go with that one. Don't be sad today. You look sad. Can I help? Perhaps. Crooked Lou and Bucktooth Bow stole a case of best fire water. Return it, and a useful artifact is yours. What artifact? It was a jest. Not funny. Uh Your question reminded me of some old games. I couldn't resist. Hmm. No matter. How can I help? Okay, let's go through that again. Yes? Interesting stories this time. You must know some interesting stories. Sure, I'm an innkeeper. <clears throat> Long ago, in a valley far away lived a girl. She was a true princess, sorceress, and witcheress. All three? Isn't that a bit much? <laughs> Don't interrupt. You want to hear the story or not? I, uh, she married a king, a priest, mage, warrior, right? No thanks. No, I won't interrupt again, Geralt. Don't be grumpy. I won't interrupt again. A story about destiny might prove useful, Witcher. She was born a princess who wanted for nothing, had loving parents and a grandmother who was a great queen. She lived in palaces guarded by hundreds of knights. Everyone thought she'd become a powerful queen, but fate had other plans. Her parents died. Enemies butchered her grandmother and took the kingdom. Still, the princess survived. Her fate became bound to one particular witcher. She gained a new family at Caer Moran, the hold of the witchers. She learned to fight, yet destiny once again made noise. The lass had magical talent. She was a source. The witchers feared the uncontrolled power of a source and needed a sorceress to assist them. She studied arcane magic. The sorceress loved a witcher and the two adopted the girl. She was truly happy and could have become a powerful sorceress. But war broke out and fate separated the family. Aggrieved, the lass disavowed magic and became a huntress, learning to love killing. Death followed her. Everyone she'd loved had died. Only the Witcher and the Sorceress denied Death's calling. Fate cast her to foreign shores, yet she returned. The worst assassin tailed her, yet she emerged victorious. Agents of all kingdoms pursued her, yet none caught her. When she killed all her enemies and peace descended upon the world, she rejoined the Witcher and Sorceress, only to have destiny sneer at her again. What happened? A peasant, unskilled in arms, killed the Witcher. The Sorceress died trying to revive him. The girl could do nothing, for she disavowed magic. So the Princess, who would not rule, the Witcheress, who fought humans, and the Sorceress, who cast no spells, used her power as a means to leave this world. I sense you haven't told all. All but one. Her name was Cyrilla. What's that matter? 
Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> One thing. Yes? Okay, let's see if he has any more interesting stories. You must know. Well, it was the same story, basically. Uh, but I did see the waitress, and I want to talk to her to see if I can sell some stuff. How can I help? Um, two innkeepers? <laughs> two innkeepers? Mama and Papa own the inn. Mama won't let me speak to strangers. As a waitress, you have to talk to strangers. <laughs> Not true. Only regulars visit our inn. Got you there. I'm a stranger. You're Geralt of Rivia. Master Dandelion sang a ballad about you, so I know you. Got me there. How can I help? <laughs> All right, let me um, empty my bags a bit. Okay, well, I sold stuff to her, and I dropped my contracts. So let me uh, chat women. with people here. Witcher. Well, not for. I uh, yeah, you already told me I that. I must hear. How about you, peasant? Did the lady of the lake appear to you? To eat. She doesn't choose just anyone. Oh I I haven't seen her. What heat! May the sun set quickly. Though recently I've had terrible dreams of night wraiths. Tell me your dreams. Midnight demons emerge when the moon is high. I dream they carry me through the air, dance around me, then let me fall. There is a floating bottle in the background here. Between that and the woman over here, I'm very distracted. Uh, but we'll ask the question. <laughs> Where did these dreams come from? One night, I saw night wraiths dancing in the fields. Even as I say this, I feel my flesh creep. <laughs> Tell me more. Sorry, the dancing bottles are great. I know it's because of the angle and someone's drinking over there, but it's hilarious. <laughs> Tell me more. I saw demons born of moonlight, wind, and the soil cooled after a day's heat. They hovered over the ground, raving. When one gazed at me, I ran as fast as my legs would carry me. I swore never to venture into the fields at night. Thanks. I'll tend to the night wraiths. Do I get a quest? No quest. Okay. No. That's unforgivable. Strange. You don't speak like one from Rivia. Did the Lady of the Lake appear to you? How does one from Rivia sound? Another witcher? Oh, no. Okay, lady. A sidetracked of a world encased in ice. Why do you a stare? A refreshing dream in heat like this. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of Gimpy Mary? No. That's Turned into a swan by the Lady of the Lake, of then flew off into the world as she had long wished. Uh. I'm a distant relative of Alina. What a pleasure to meet the famous witcher, Gerald of Trigia. <laughs> thanks, oh, thanks, Dandelion. Unforgivable. A witcher? Uh, tend to those I'll noon wraiths in the field. No. That's unforgivable. <laughs> Let's talk to Dandelion one more time. All right, I guess that's it. See ya. Well, since we're here, let's take care of our next um, fist fighter. Let's see, I've got, I should look for a stronger opponent. I'm guessing it's the rock Fighting right here. Watching. <laughs> I heard you beat Butterbean and Fat Fred. Mm -hmm. And Gablada. I'm looking for a worthy opponent. Then welcome. They call me the rock. Sounds ominous. Wanna fight a real champion? What's the wager? <laughs> 500 orins. 500 orins? Uh, <laughs> no rules apply? No rules apply? Why? Oh, we're not going? Okay. Hang on. 500. All right, let's 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 do this. I've got 500 orins. I'm in. Sometimes I'd prefer to be a peasant. Like this isn't gonna be a problem. <laughs> I'm itching to it, someone. <laughs> oh, down he goes. <laughs> I hate to fight. Oh, Gerald. Congratulations, champ. Before you collect your reward, know another fight awaits. Oh. Who with? Go to the swamp. Where you'll meet the nameless one. Choose your reward. 
Well, I think I'll just take the coin, to be honest. I'll take the coin. 500 orange is yours. 1,000 orange, great. Waste of I words. must face the rock's teacher in the swamp. I beat the rock, he claims that only his teacher is stronger and he lives in the cemetery located in the swamp behind Old Vizima. I can't get into Old Vizima yet. Fighting I or watching? I wish I could fight all these guys for money, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. I don't really well, I love weddings. have the patience for that right now. Okay, like let me save. Should I hurry? And let's talk to the gambler here first. No challenge. Yes. So you like to gamble? So you like to gamble? I love gambling. Female gamblers are rare. So are interesting men. If you don't care to play, leave. Um, I don't want to play you. It's time I was on my way. <laughs> I'm not good at these to make money off them. I only want to get the quest done. That's it. That's the whole purpose. Well, let's talk to Julian. Greetings, Witcher. I've heard a lot of good things about your kind. That's rare. Usually people treat me like a leper. <laughs> not in my house. When I was a child, I heard many tales of a witcher who saved my grandfather's life in exchange for a silver penny. That must have been a while back. <laughs> I'm Geralt. Oh, yes. In the olden days. I'm Julian. It's a pleasure. Oh, my. So, let's see. We've got... I've taken Berengar's job, decided to handle the problem myself. Hear about the notice. Tell me the story about your grandfather. What's up? What's up? And I want to talk to you about Alvin. Well, let me hear the story about his grandfather first. That sounds nice. Tell me the story of your grandfather. Grandfather, may Melitelli watch over his soul, had a plot of land. A piece of a rocky, frozen valley in northern Kovir, and a deserted coal mine with no coal. Grandfather always said that a treasure was concealed in the valley. He worked hard every year to discover that treasure. Initially, many gladly took the jobs he offered and helped. But soon it became clear that the Grandfather had gone mad, that there was no treasure. <laughs> when he was 47, had rheumatism and a collection of Bobolak scalps above his mantle, he was overcome with grief and went outside. He began cursing the heavens, berating all the known gods in the foulest language he knew. The gods answered. There was a terrible rumble, and an avalanche descended on the valley. Grandfather regained consciousness, burrowed out of the snow, and looked around to see something that would change his life. The entire valley was glimmering strangely, glimmering so beautifully, that he nearly didn't see the beast coming towards him with a heavy gait. Grandfather fled, bending over once to pick up a strangely glimmering stone. In short, he escaped. Descending from the mountains, he encountered a witcher who agreed to slay the monster in exchange for a silver penny. They returned to the valley, and the witcher slew the beast. He could not help noticing the wealth laying in that valley, yet he demanded nothing beyond the penny promised him earlier. Grandfather grew to trust him and knew that sooner or later someone or something would come along and want to take his treasure, for the treasure in the valley was immense, Geralt. Diamond deposits that took years to extract. They became partners. The Witcher watched the workers, killed monsters, drove off bandits, and Grandfather managed the business. He's a legend in Kovir, and my family is wealthy and respected. That's the whole story. Hmm. That's an interesting story. I wonder what the witcher's name was. Not that it matters, but... Okay, I'm here about the notice. I can't remember what he wanted, but I probably don't have it. I'm here about the notice. I'll buy any basilisk hmm. hides you have. Reptile skin shoes are in fashion in Vizima, you know. I'll come and see you if I find any more. Hurry, no fashion lasts forever. <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk about Berengar. I've taken Berengar's job, decided to handle this problem myself. Listen, I'm in the middle of planning my wedding. You have no idea how much time it takes. Come back later. Okay, 
Um, uh, let's talk about Alvin then. I wanted to ask about Alvin. He needs a caretaker who is knowledgeable about magic. And neither I nor my future spouse are suited to be his guardian. Fair enough. I see. You should train him to be a witcher. Uh -uh. You know not what you ask. For the time being, I'll keep an eye on him. Geralt? Um, uh, well, let's go with what's up. What's up? Soon I'll marry the village mayor's daughter, Alina. We're planning our wedding as we speak. Okay. That's okay. All right, well, I'm going to go shopping here with... What's his name again? Uh, Julian, and and see what he has to sell. Okay, well, Julian did have some books to sell. Three in particular. Well, three that I hadn't already read. So, the first of which is A Diary of a Dice Collector, The Diary of a Passionate Gambler, Passionate Dice Poker Gambler. Glossary Dice Poker, but let's read the story. So summer 1263, a Dwarven Regiment of Mahakam Volunteer Army is stationed near, near my estate. The officers spend their day playing dice poker. It seems an interesting game. Autumn 1263, the Dwarves have marched south. How long were they there? For a whole season? Okay. The dwarves have marched south toward a great battle with Nilfgaard. Dear old Molnar gave me a set of dice. I think he meant to compensate me for all the games I lost. Winter 1264, so a year plus later. My trip to Vizima was worthwhile. I won a decent sum at the inn. It's a pity the locals don't want to play me anymore. I must learn to lose a bit more often. Spring 6, 1264. Oh, he meant like early winter, not late winter okay uh the jade dice cost me a fortune but my collection would be incomplete without them every now and again i managed to convince someone to play around with me but i feel i must move to the city again autumn 1264 what rotten luck i had to sell father's estate as soon as i start winning again i'll buy it back oh that's bad to a spring 1265, I was told a band of deserters stalks the area. I doubt the poor village or my humble abode holds anything they could covet. There's nothing of value around here. Maybe they would fancy a game of dice poker. Oh, that is so sad. Gambling is bad. I feel like this is the gambling is bad <laughs> message from the game. In his diary, the dice collector claims that dice poker became popular in the village of Murky Waters during the war with Nilfgaard. There should be loads of enthusiasts in the area. Perhaps. Oh, inventory. So the next book is Disenchanting a Striga Anonymous. The Witcher then said to King Foltis, Pay me, sire, and I will find your daughter in the dark tomb. I will restore her human form if I can, and if I cannot, then I will not hesitate to kill the princess. The king understood this was his only chance and so placed his daughter's fate in the Witcher's hand. The conjurer struggled with the Striga for hours. He warded her off with silver and magical arts. He grappled with the beast and did not let her wound him, but avoided causing serious harm to her as well. Finally, he locked himself in the crypt, sealed the entrance with magic, and waited until dawn. Witchers possess great knowledge about monsters and know that the rooster's morning call is enough to disenchant a cursed creature. No. Character That's entry for me. Some years ago, Geralt of Rivia came to King Foltis's court in search of work. He obtained a contract to free the monarch's daughter, Anna, from a spell which had turned her into a striga or to kill her if all else failed. The Witcher managed to free the girl from the spell and discovered that one of the courtiers had been responsible for the curse. Yes. And then Ada's quest, or Ada's um, update. Princess Ada was born of an incestuous union and came into this world as a striga. This was the consequence of a curse cast by a jealous courtier who had loved her mother. For several years, the striga roamed old Zima, stalking and devouring the unwary. Until I arrived, no one had been able to kill her or lift the curse. Ada did not fully regain her personality, however, and there is still a danger of a relapse. That's why the princess wears amulets and participates in rituals designed to ward off the curse. And that was my opening cutscene of the game. And last one. The Double Cross of Alzur, an edition censored by the Brotherhood. 
I was vested with the thankless responsibility of preparing a new edition of the incomplete tome of Alzur. Some of its pages had been torn out, which describes the methods of creating monstrous beasts. Why? Whoever remembers the Koshkshe or the V of Maribor knows the evil the books has caused, especially the double cross of Alzur described therein. The following edition provides information on creatures such as the Frightener or the Koshkshe, but does not contain the secrets of creating these beasts. To ensure safety, I would nevertheless suggest that readers never utter any formulae aloud and speak all vowels while inhaling. So we get a bestiary and ingredients. Or not. I work too hard. Okay, well, I'm going to take a moment to... Geralt? Sell some more items to Julian. Then I think I'm going to run back down to Alina's house and um, talk to Alvin and give him the amulet so that he doesn't do any more magic. So once I arrive there, I will meet you. Well, I will pick you back up there once I arrive. That's the sentence I'm going for. <laughs> well, I am back in the village and I was going to head to Alina's house, but when I ran past the blacksmith to I'm again sorry. sell stuff, I noticed the blacksmith's son is also here. He is already looks grumpy. <laughs> A customer. Why so surprised? Why so surprised? Rarely do any buy arms in murky waters. I'm no salesman like my father. Your father. My father told me to sell arms. But if no one buys... Uh, oh, but better not to argue with father. Maybe he wanted you busy. Perhaps. I'm to sit quiet and sell to those who want to buy. <laughs> okay, well, let me go shopping and see what you have. Well, I did speak to the blacksmith's son, and he had a really nice sword that I really want to buy, but it's 3,000 orins, and I'm... I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. I, I may need to do some research because um, I want to make sure I have him as best geared as he can be for for the upcoming few chapters. But I don't want to spend money if I'm just going to get a better sword off of Monster Kill later. Treacherous so. vixen! Oh, oh my. She is very upset. And Alvin is nowhere to be found, so that's kind of a problem. But let's talk to Melina. Why do you seek me? Um... Looking for Alvin, I saw Julian and Selena together, but don't get bent on a shape. Selena's starved for attention. <laughs> he didn't seem interested. Well, let's cheer up the bride to be, okay? I saw Julian and Selena together, but don't get bent out of shape. Selena's starved for attention. Julian didn't seem really interested. Selena can be unbearable, but she'll change if she marries. And Julian, well, he loves me, and no argument can change that. I merely wanted to be sure Julian was well, without him knowing or thinking I was concerned. Thank you, Witcher. Ah, uh, women. <laughs> okay, then let's... Oh, quest update. Heat of the day. Alina wasn't worried. As she states it, she trusts Julian is... As she states it, she trusts Julian, is sure of her feelings for her, and just wanted, to, wanted me to make sure he was all right, women. I should find something else to do before they implicate me in the wedding preparations. Implicate me in the wedding preparations? That doesn't make sense, but okay, whatever. Where's Alvin? Why do you... I'm looking for Alvin. If he's not in the village, check the fairy tale ruins nearby. Okay. Thanks. Okay, um, but I feel like that was another area and I don't want to go to another area just yet because I've got two open already and I, I'm not done yet. So Lady claims that Alvin often plays by the ruins near the village. Um, okay, so as I was running down here, I thought that I could do two things. Well, the first of which being I could work on this daily bread quest because I have the bread. And then I believe the... What was it? There's supposed to be another elf there who I can talk to about the armor that Berengar mentioned. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, probably the last thing I'm going to do in today's video, is run over to where the elves are and turn in the quest and maybe get another update. But instead of having you tag along with me while I pick flowers, I will pick you back up once I arrive. And here we are outside the cave for the elves but they're outside today and look there's a dayon priest hang on 
let's uh okay let's remember how to use my buttons it's random oh he's healing himself what it's so cheating Oh, we got him, finally. I was afraid that could fight could go on forever. Hmm. Stones of yeast and voidenoi bladder. Huh. So is that a voidenoi who attacked me? I, I was going to say that I don't know what it is about the lakeside, both like this area and also the murky waters area, but it is just so beautiful. I don't, I don't know. I just really like it out here. It's very lovely. Anyway, let's save after that fight. Not that it was super difficult, but I don't want to do it again. And let's talk to Torviel. Yes? Uh, I brought your bread. I bought bread. I'm pleased we didn't misplace our trust. Um. Oh, no, we're going to give her all five loaves. Here, five loaves. I thank you. Moments like these make me think we can end this spiral of hatred and accept each other as we are. Quest completed, daily bread. A few loaves of bread won't save the elves from starving. Probably not, but it's a start, right? And then the other person I needed to talk to was the elven craftsman. So let me do that. Let me save, just in case, just in case. Kedmil Vakern. Greetings. Who are you? When the chaos of war surrounds us, few care for beauty and harmony. I ensure that beauty remains in the world. I create customized objects. You're a craftsman? Craftsmen produce useful items. The beauty of my works could awaken the dead. I'm um, here about the notice. What was his notice? I'm here about the notice. Do you have the giant centipede armor? Oh, no. Not yet. I see. Okay, let's also try to get a better angle without all the weeds in the way. There we go. Yeah. There are quite a number of you here and Raven's armor. Let's go with the armor one first, just in case he's insulted by the other. I'm looking for information on Raven's armor. The legendary witch's armor. It has unique magical qualities. I'm listening. It was made in the gnomes workshops, but finished by elves. Hmm. The song master, Tayin Sao, took an interest in Raven's armor and worked for 12 days straight, each movement of his chisel accompanied by a song of power. Legend says that in battle, the armor sang for Raven a song of victory, adding to his confidence and calming him. A beautiful story. Do you know if any records of these songs remain? I would look in crypts if I were you. Find the tomb of the elven songmaster. Objects belonging to him in life must lie in or near his sarcophagus. Okay, uh, well, let's ask about the number. There are quite a number of you here. We escaped from Vizima. The wounded and sick lie in the cave. If you like, speak with our leader, Teruvio. Any trouble from the inhabitants here? The Lady of the Lake reigns in this land. We're safe here, though I have heard of conflict with the Vodianoi. The Lady of the Lake? The Lady of the Lake? The goddess of this land. Listen to the bubbling waters, the whispering of the trees. Look at the waving grains, the smiling people. You'll sense it too. I think I get it. You'll understand when you meet her. Okay, bye. Farewell. Great, so that's another quest update for armor. To fashion a truly magnificent suit of armor, I need the notes of an elven minstrel. I should be able to find these in the minstrel's tomb or in the tomb of one of his disciples. I need lots of things for this armor, but I hmm. want it. I want a bed. So this is where I'm going to end things for today. I hmm. don't really know what I'm going to do on Tuesday. <laughs> I'll look through my quest log. Maybe I'll wander around and talk to more elves. 
Um, maybe I'll take the boat out to the island that uh, I mm. think is possible, but we'll kind of see how everything goes. I am going to go back to Sheridian or Sheridian, one of those, and try and gamble with him because I know he's in the sharper, but I'm not going to do that on camera. I'll do when that um, after I wrap up with you. But I'll update you on Tuesday if I actually win. It may take a while, but we'll see mm. how it goes. Anyway, I'm babbling. Thank you, as always, so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe. And I will see you again on when Tuesday with another new Witcher video.